I, I can't think of many times in any games I've ever played where I would get value out of this. I generally don't care what people think of me after I interacted with them. I think that's 95% of the, the players. I think, especially at like, you know, we're having a drink with some buds and doing silly things. That is the default mentality where yeah. a lunacy tends to overtake the actual like practical or it, it de the serious or intense kind of feelings that the game can offer. Hello friends, Robert Pevin here, author of the Cameron and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're taking another whiz. That is there to say, is. We, uh, we are covering another wizard subclass, uh, and today's is the Enchantment Wizard. Oh yeah, these are really, really busted for one particular feature. <laughs> I love Enchantment dearly because you could do some funny stuff. Uh, one diamond. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so you start with a Jamet Savant, like all of the Wizard's Ghouls that came to the PHB. This just says you can have the time and gold costs of putting a spell into your spell book, which only matters if you're adding bonus spells. So you can basically ignore this text at 90% of the tables I played at. Actually, at every table I've played at, and probably the majority of tables out there, if I were to guess. Um, the real second level feature you get is Hypnotic Gaze. Starting at second level, when you choose this school, your soft words and enchanting gaze can magically enthrall another creature. As an action, choose one creature that you can see within five feet. The, the creature can see or hear you. It must succeed on a wisdom save and throw against your wizard, spell save DC, or be charmed by you until the end of your next turn. Charmed creature's speed drops to zero, and the charmed creature is incapacitated and visibly dazed. On subsequent turns, you can use your action to maintain this effect, extending the duration until the end of your next turn. However, the effect ends if you move more than five feet away from the creature, if the creature can neither see nor hear you, or if the creature takes damage. Once the effect ends, or the creature succeeds in the initial saving throw against the effect, you can't use the feature on that creature again until you finish a long rest. Hmm. Nifty. I like this thing a lot. It's not that good, to, but I like it a lot. I'm trying to figure out, like, this is, uh, I was thinking at first, all right, it's a free charm person you can use at will, but, like, you can't, the charmed person can't do anything but, so uh, yeah i would think of it more as a combat spell than like a combat yeah. feature than a out of combat utility feature you could use this just like sneak up behind the guard you trance them and everyone sneaks by and they were just charmed and incapacitated briefly and then you just dis you just drop it and leave right and everyone snuck in past those single lone guard right that's a way you could do it i'm envisioning right, an enchanter but then, wizard but then but, you walk five feet away from him and the guard wakes up i mean he, he knows he was charmed and uh incapacitated by you and sure, then, but like what I'm saying is you stand there, you lock down the guard while everyone right. else gets in and drops the drawbridge or whatever, right? So you're just holding them there because you can continue maintaining this if they fail the oh, initial save. Yeah. Okay. You just spam it on them until everyone runs in, drops the gates, whatever, and then you release him. He can go alarm, get the alarm bells or whatever, but that seems like a pretty low or out of combat utility, at least wise, a pretty easy example to me. More sure. likely in combat is you go, okay, what's the biggest, baddest monster in here? Great. You were having a staring contest with everyone cleans up your mess. <laughs> and they deal with the little guys, and you try and lock down the big guy and just be like, everyone deal with the problems while I deal with this guy. Uh, and then once everyone's dead, you can let for the free of one. It works out. Now, is the risk worth the reward? Like yeah, past I mean, level, in combat, I don't think like, you want to do don't this. Wanna, I don't want to be getting within five feet of you know the, the biggest, baddest creature on the map. I mean, there's definitely the kind of enchanter wizard that would, right? I could see there being yeah. a charming scoundrel that does want to get right up in next to the big monster. It's even the kind of thing, like maybe as a precursor to a fight, right? Like you can see someone's monologuing and you step forward to challenge them and they like, give you a, a stern look and start smirking. And then you go, I'm not a case. And then, every, then you go, okay, team, I got him locked down, start killing people. And then they start dealing with the other monsters, right? Sort of as an engagement tool. You can try to sneak in there and get that, get drop on them by using hypnotic gaze out the gate that way that could be a way to do it too right um yeah um now let me clear up something here um they they get to pass the saving throw the first time you use this but to maintain it there's no more saving throws right correct once you have a lockdown as long as you're wasting actions they're wasting actions yeah that's something yeah i could see this being occasionally useful but uh i don't see me using it very often this is the kind of feature that i really want to play around with like mm. i 
it definitely shines brightest in the lowest tiers when you don't have great competing options, right? Like hold person is a competing option for this. Hold monster, dominate person, dominate monster. Like a lot of the bread and butter enchantment stuff is going to do what this does. This being an at-will version of it, though, does make it really cheap. And you can just kind of always have the ability to do the enchanter thing. And as a base feature goes, I think that's pretty much all I would ask for. Um, it's a little clunky. I wish it was able to be done by like 15 feet or even 30 feet. Like just give me the ability as long as they can still see and hear me, I can maintain it. But uh, where but, it is I now, mean, I think you other, can do some cool I mean, stuff with it still. Yeah, the other problem I have with it is that I mean, you are a wizard. You're like the most powerful character in the game. And that's like... Not great out of combat. I mean, you gave one decent example. In combat, I want to be, you know, blasting things around with my spells, not uh, standing there staring at a, a creature. Yeah, that's definitely where this falls apart the most, is past, like, fifth level. Again, the yeah. low tiers, I do, I would be able to say, okay, there have been two encounters. We did the guard encounter first. I'm at half my spell slots. I don't want to use all of my big first and second level spells here. I'm going to hypnotic gaze the boss, and then once everyone else deals with some of the problems, I can break that trance and deal with the monster with my spell mm -hmm. slots then. And as, a, as far as resource conservation, this seems okay to me. You just stop needing to do resource con conservation, at least in a major fashion, as the game progresses. Like, it's not nearly as, you don't feel nearly as tight on spells past fifth level. And that makes this all of a sudden like, oh, I'd never, ever want to spend my action doing this. And that That does eventually make this pretty obsolete. Yeah, I mean... Resource cost aside, I just never want to spend my action standing there, literally standing there doing nothing. You're not doing nothing. You're incapacitating somebody. Yeah. You're saying yeah, you don't yeah, get yeah. turns. You don't get turns. You don't get turns. That if imagine <laughs> a single white dragon, right? And you're like, it's it woke up. We have all of its loot. Someone's got its egg. I got dimension door. I have it out. Hypnotic ace. And you stare it down. Everyone leaves with the loot, and then you teleport away. Yeah. Because you will get the turn before it will, right? You can yeah. opt to not spend your actions redoing this, so you could opt to then just say, okay, we got everything we needed, we don't need this thing in, uh, in Trice anymore, I'm out of here. And I only spent whatever the escape spell was, which could be cheaper, could be easier to do, could fit on your sheets in neat ways. I think this kind of character wants to play around with, a character that wants to play around with this feature is going to take high utility, high mobility stuff to try and get in positions to make this feature work more so. Like, you do, you do kind of have to put some legwork in to make this thing exciting, I think. But Yeah. All in all, it's an interesting feature. I don't know how powerful it is, but it's interesting. Um, especially as you start getting the better spells, which this plays really well with. So this kind of like, again, on ramp in the low tiers to the powerful spells. Sixth level, we get instinctive charm. So at sixth level, when a creature you can see within 30 feet makes an attack roll against you, you can use your reaction to divert the attack, provided that another creature is within the attack's range. The attacker must make a wisdom saving throw against your wizard's spell save DC. On a failed save, the attacker must target the creature that is closest to it, not including you or itself. If multiple creatures are closest, the attacker picks. On a successful save, you can't use the feature again in uh, on the attacker, on a successful save, you can't use this feature on the attacker again until you finish your long rest. So same rules as the one before. Yeah. You must choose to use this feature before knowing whether the attack hits or misses. Creatures that can't be charmed are immune to this effect. See, I like this one. I This one I like way, way less, but it does play pretty well with Hypnotic Gaze, right? Does it? Yeah, because you would get up in someone's face, something went wrong, it attacks you, you go, actually hit that thing, Right. This yeah. is, the hypnotic games no. gives you a reason to engage something, and this gives you a tool to defend yourself when you're engaged with something. All right, that's true enough. But I, I was thinking of it more for, like, like I said before, I don't want to be within five feet of the creature that's going to want to kill me. I was thinking uh, using uh, the instinctive charm more for ranged attacks. It's only thirty yeah. feet, and that's not particularly far for a thirty feet. I had thirty feet. Um, yeah, yeah but. You also have to have another target within five feet of you. How often is that going to be the case? Like, I well, don't love... I mean, if you're trying to use it with hypnotic gaze, not necessarily if, if somebody's, you know, got a crossbow aimed at you, you're 30 feet away. Now, like, everyone else within his crossbow range is a potential target, right? When a creature within 30 feet makes tackle against you, you're going to provide another creature within the attack range. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. All right, that adds a little bit of utility to it. I didn't, I didn't think of that 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 through. For some reason, I thought it was within five feet of you. Was the no? New that's target. the hypnotic gaze, which yeah, is what I like least about that. I I like that they ask you to take some risk. I think high risk, high reward gameplay patterns are a lot more fun than low risk, high reward gameplay patterns. Yeah. Um, still, like 
a sixth level feature that is you can sometimes divert attacks if they're close to you and you have someone within the attacks range. It's going to be fickle. I don't. I wouldn't expect this to work a lot of the time, but there will be a decent amount of encounters where you'll use Instinctive Charm once or twice, and that probably makes it a reasonable defensive feature, right? Like, I like this way more than a damage resistance. I like this way more than most of the defensive features characters tend to get. And again, it playing well with the sixth or the second level feature is great. It helps defend your concentration because you're diverting all damage potentially. That's pretty good. There's a little bit of there's a little bit of something to this thing. I like it. Uh, I mean, it's always going to feel good to divert attack that was going to hit me. But if it hits an enemy, that's even better. Which it almost always won't, especially if it's in 30 feet. Probably not. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. If, if, if it's at a range, they will definitely pick an ally, your ally over their ally every right. single time. But, but every once if it's in a you while. and two ogres, and now the ogres yeah. are hitting each other, it's kind of That's fun. hilarious. Yeah. yeah, great. Love that. Uh, now, the real reason that I think anyone plays this is for the 10th level feature, which is called Split Enchantment. Starting in 10th level, when you cast an enchantment spell of first level or higher that targets only one creature, you would have it target a second creature. Gross. <laughs> this feature is b -b -b busted. This um, feature is so good. What are, are we using this for what? Hold person, hold monsters? Are those hold person, dissonant whispers, yeah. charm person. Uh, there's suggestion, this twin's suggestion, this twin's dominate beast, the Twilight Twins, Raluthum Psychic Lance, which is actually really cute. You can double up, uh, again, charm person, dominate person, hold monster. It autos irresistible dance, you can double with this. Like, this makes. Feeble mind, really funny. This makes dominate monster ridiculous. Uh, yeah, this, this thing's just, it's it takes a lot of my favorite kinds of spells. I, mean, I say that it takes a lot of powerful saber dies and turns them and like just juices them. Just like what if they were just twice the value, twice the targets for no extra cost? Like it's well, ridiculous, right? Double the chance it will do something. Yeah, that too. I love that this works with psychic lands. That's really funny. I was going over the list. I was like, what ones do I actually want to cast this? And Raluthum Psychic Lance, Giant Pink Laser from the forehead. That's kind of fun. It's 76 second damage to two things and incapacitates them. Eh? Eh? Yeah. It's pretty good. It's a fourth level spell it's available to wizards. Yeah, I love that. I love that a lot. Uh, if you're here for a hot tip from uh, the Fizzman's Treasury of Dragons comes Raluthum Psychic Lance. Take that on your 10th level enchanters. Uh, but yeah, I don't know how much there is actually talk about this thing, because it's just, you twin the best enchantment spells in the game. Right. That's pretty good. That, that seems great. Twinning suggestion? Yeah. I want a twin suggestion. Ah, uh, yeah, no argument here. Uh, 14th level, we finally end on Alter Memories. At 14th level, you get the ability to make a creature unaware of your magical influence on it. When you cast an enchantment spell to charm one or more creatures, you can alter one creature's understanding so it remains unaware of being charmed. Additionally, once before the spell expires, you can use your action to try and make the chosen creature forget some of the time it spent charmed. The creature must succeed on an in saving throw against your wizard spell safety seat, or lose a number of hours its mem in its memories, equal to one plus your charisma modifier. You may can make the creature forget less time, and an amount of time can't exceed the duration of the enchantment spell. This thing is weird. <laughs> I love it, but it's weird. What do you do uh. with this thing? I don't 14th know. 14th level it... especially. What do you do with this thing? Your mileage is going to vary depending on Definitely. what kind of game you play. Yes. I uh, I can't think of many times in any games I've ever played where I would get value out of this. I generally don't care what people think of me after I interacted with them. I think that's 95% of the, the players. I think especially at like you know, we're having some drink with some buds and doing silly things. That is the default mentality where yeah. a lunacy tends to overtake the actual like practical or it, it de the serious or intense kind of feelings that the game can offer. I'm envisioning this though in a setting and table at a setting where dominate person plays a major role in outside of combat. If dominate yeah. person is something you're doing to get people to do things for you to influence governments, to influence, you know, um, and redirect orders get shipments right. stolen try and track magic items if you want to stumble across a shopkeep right you charm them without them knowing that you're there you like you distance dominate person them or whatever you come up you ask them some questions then you scrub their memory and they have no idea you came that could be powerful it could also more likely be completely worthless so like 
what table you're at, how much you value those kinds of things is going to be a real question. Another real question is what if you just prepared modify memory of fifth level enchantment spell that wizards can learn? Um, this lets you reshape another creature's memories. It makes a wisdom saving throw, and on a failed save, it goes charmed by you, and then you can reshape its memories for 10 minutes. Like 10 minutes worth of memories. Yeah. That's usually enough. Probably and that's not as a much whole as you need. feature, right? That like, um, makes this thing kind of neat, but ultimately I think quite bad, especially in an average table. Yeah, an average table. I mean, I was thinking uh, the <laughs> some of the NPCs I've acted with uh, would interacted with would uh like to forget it but uh not my responsibility sure that's what alcohol is for in those tables right yeah <laughs> all together i think this option's pretty cute i like the power that it gives you a split enchantment and actually like says no you are the best enchanter in the game i think that definitely could have been the capstone i think that could have been the 14th level feature and i've been very happy with that um yeah. ultra memory is definitely been a 10th level feature and i would have been more happy with it but still like yeah, it's not great but it's cool at least I think the rest of these features kind of fit that build to me. Not great, but cool. Hypnotic Gaze in the low tiers, I think it's pretty fine. Instinctive Charm, you'll use an encounter or two. It competing with your reaction with powerful reaction first level spells that you've an abundance of is a bit of a mm, kind of situation. But all these together, I think this pays a picture to play a pretty easy enchanter. I don't think you're going to lean on Hypnotic Gaze much past the first three levels. And everything past that, it's just going to be like, yeah, okay, every once in a while I got some decent options. That seems like a B to me, right? Maybe a C. Yeah, probably a B. Uh. Enchantments is really busted. Yeah, Splint Enchantment is nice. And <clears throat> I think I like Instinctive Charm more than you do. But uh Yeah, I think so too. It's uh Yeah, I think it's something you can get a lot of use out of and it only costs your reaction. So if you're not you doing much with your reaction, you might as well. You're a wizard. You have the best reactions in the game. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm gonna demo this to C tier, just because Splint Enchantment's tenth level. I don't give it a thing C's. The thing is fucking it's super average. It's powerful at 10th level most people aren't reaching that but as a capstone you get to it's pretty cool it's still like pretty honed in though so what you're able to do with it it's not going to like reshape how the game can be played all of a sudden and everything else here is kind of lukewarm if not a gaze uh, and say charm are fine i'm uh sticking with the b okay. i uh yeah you say like i mean even you said like a split enchantment could have been the capstone that's like we get a capstone at level 10 Excellent. And like, that's neat. But as far as like, if an average player played this option from first through fifth level, that's where most yeah. people are at, right? Even first through ninth level, the option definitely ain't there, right? Like it's not overtly yeah. powerful. It gives you some neat little things to do, but they're not like an even every encounter kind of thing to do. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you could try it every encounter. You sure could. All right. Well, that was the Enchantment Wizard. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Oops. Goodbye.